Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Miro and today we're gonna be talking about Linotella Sericata. So they are 10 months right now in my care, which I assume they're gonna be around one year old. And it's gonna matter in a little bit because I'm gonna show you a cool feeding montage of them from when I had them first couple of weeks to monthly increases in size. Linotella Sericata comes from South America exclusively and mainly from Colombia. That's why they call Colombian funnel web spiders. And these are the locations of all Linotellas that I was able to find on iNaturalist. And it's kind of interesting that they mainly stay on the Pacific side. We're gonna go a little bit backwards in this video. I'm gonna show you a couple of recent rehouses that I'm gonna show you unboxing and then we're gonna do the feeding time lapse so enough chit chatting and let's get started with the rehouses you know what i'm saying i built this linotella sericata enclosure sooner just to kind of make sure that things are not molding and things are molding we're gonna add a bunch of springtails in here there you go make it rain so the way I'm gonna approach it is the same way I approach rehousing of my Arasu spider and that is take the whole webbing with the spider in it and just put it in here and that's it. Let's hope it goes well. I see where she is. I hope I don't lift up the webbing and she's gonna be at the bottom. That's one thing I don't want to happen. So let's see how that goes. So far so good. I can see her. She's in it. Yeah. These spiders are very hesitant to leave their webbing. You can see her, she's right here. And this is it. Boom. This one has a mesh lid, but I need the humidity to stay in. So I have a little acrylic sheet on the mesh. And basically that way I only have this much opening. And like I said, guys, these are some of my favorites just because they're so easy to work with. I just really love species like that. So yeah, let's try the same technique. Uh, she's moving. She thinks it's food actually. Oh yeah, that's what I forgot to tell you guys. They're super food oriented. You see she's coming out. Now she's coming out on the other side. Again, realizing. This is an earthquake. And I don't know if I said it in the first rehouse, but they are very hesitant to come off the webbing. So you're very unlikely of them to run out even if they're in a smaller enclosure. You see, you just saw it. She just touched something and she went immediately in her safe house. And here is some footage from the first three house because they had a kind of like an in-between enclosure. When I first got them, I think I put them in something like three inches cube and then I moved them into five inches cube. I just put a few twigs around the edges of the enclosure and left the middle hollow and just took their whole nest and put it on the inside. And she's a little confused right now, just like looking around, kind of trying to figure it out what's going on, where am I? I got my Linotella Sericata at Fear Not Tarantulas. They have $50 minimum, so I end up buying two, but definitely no regrets. So let's watch the unboxing real quick. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, she's coming out already. And she's in there. Wow, fantastic. Let me see if I can show her to you. She's a tiny spider for the enclosure, but I didn't really bother with some medium size enclosure for her. Yeah, she's moving yeah and that's simply because she's gonna web up so I will know where she is so it's not a problem the second Linotella actually got out and started running up my sleeve so I had to cup her and look how tiny so I want to say this is around one inch but look at those spinnerets one third of the length of the spider come out there you go yeah a Linotella sericata come from humid areas, so I'm trying to provide them with the same kind of uh, environment. I have about one to one and a half inches of them substrate and I miss them two, probably like two times a week. I miss the webbing pretty heavy to be honest. Now let's go to the promise feeding montage and we're gonna be seeing Linotella sericata from one week, two weeks to one month and so on until nine months and the 10 month we actually saw in the intro and i'm assuming that this is basically like one year of their life because you know when i got them you just saw the uh, unboxing they were already like what they call like three quarters of an inch but you know something like this <laughs> all right let's get started they blend in nicely and the speed is just incredible already as the babies oh she's got bigger She's already getting some of the colors, huh, in her. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, I thought the cricket's gonna be too small. I was like, maybe I'll do more fruit flies, but now I'm just like, no, this is perfect. Get it, get it. She got it. 
and at one month they fully webbed up the whole enclosure at least the whole bottom of that enclosure which is pretty impressive <laughs> oh man this is definitely gonna be in flesh there you go and they're getting big And I got a huge colony of these banana roaches right now. These are the banana roaches, Panclora giant. Cool feeders. Mm, that's pretty cool. They're still struggling with it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a pretty good size prey for them. They usually don't go for a big prey from what I read. Here at three months, I'm testing out my Olympus stuff for its slow motion. So this is four times slower. And I have to say the footage is kind of blurry. I'm not super happy with the camera. So I ended up using my regular Olympus that I use for my pictures for slow motion and for macro photography. It's still a cool camera, the Olympus stuff. It's cool for like taking it outside. And I actually think since we're having a baby on our way that she's gonna be using it because you know, it's tough, it's in the name. And also it's kind of indestructible. So, you know, she can drop it in the water. She can like, you know, put it in the mud, drop it and nothing's gonna happen. I really like when Lino tell us they grab their prey and they basically go back like on their back you know they basically when they go backwards they do this what you just saw and i think they do it that way so the prey actually can hold on to the to the webbing or anything else so they basically flip on their back and it's kind of entertaining sometimes to watch them because they look like they just stand up and they're running on their two legs this is the missing link guys this is the <laughs> this is what the scientists have been looking you know the spiders are now starting to run on on their <laughs> on their hind legs and here at five months, they starting to get some adult colors. They starting to get some of that bronze. This is the first time I see them without the lid on after they molted. So I am like super, super amazed by how awesome, awesome they look. Awesome, awesome, super, super. And here is actually some slow motion from my camera. And I think it's actually better than the tough. And it would be even better if I actually zoomed out a little bit more and was uh, on a tripod. But it's not always possible to actually do this with a tripod. Sometimes you just have to go handheld. Because the spiders, you know, they move, their prey moves. And you don't get to frame everything and crap a lot. And at seven months, I want to say they are around almost two inches if you take the diagonal leg span. And I like to give them all kinds of food. Usually I don't like to give them anything too big. It should be the size of their abdomen basically. And they do have a hard time with those dubia roaches sometimes. But you know, in the nature they sometimes hunt beetles and you know, all kinds of stuff. So sometimes they just have to struggle a little bit with the food. It's not gonna be always, you know, easy prey like it's a small cricket. And I like to give them also a variety of food as you guys can see. So they get anything from flies to crickets. They started on fruit flies and pinhead crickets but i get like really tiny pinhead crickets they're actually smaller than the hidei fruit flies let's see if we can get her attention i'm gonna tap the dubia roach come get it come get it <laughs> let's see what she's gonna do where she's go oh no oh my god she's coming from under <laughs> wow i did not expect that this is the first time she actually did that this is the first time even one of them did it i've seen my nursery web spiders do that but never seen one of these doing this sneaky attack from under so then being close to a year you can definitely start seeing some of the blues on their legs it's pretty dark a lot of times I noticed that the blue spiders, they can look something between blue and black, depending on the lighting. But I, from what I've seen on pictures, their legs should get much bluer than this. So I assume once they get bigger, they get bluer. And I cannot wait because I already love the combination right now. Like I said, the little bronze with the blue just goes together so well. I'm getting some fashion tips from my little Tanaseri Kata. <laughs> and in those bronze shoes with my blue jeans. It's gonna look so cool. And here we got one struggling with a dubia at nine months old, which I assume she's gonna be roughly around a year. So this is how big they get around a year. And that's not bad huh, for a one-year-old spider. 
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video about Linotella Sericata. If you guys are tarantula keepers and you're thinking about getting something different, this is a step in the right direction. So if you like the video, please hit the like button, notifications button and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out at spidercafe.shop and I'll see you in a week. Ciao!